living room may seem like an unusual place for an editorial meeting, but over the years this has become the Congo Square newsroom. The publication started in 2011, the brainchild of Oliver Mulombo. He, along with thousands of others, fled the political unrest in the Congo, seeking asylum here in South Africa. I saw the need of a platform that can inform and educate uh, the Congolese uh, community. There was a big need to, for an education, for an inf information in the community. The stories are sourced from the local community, from personal experiences and photographs to job opportunities and useful tips like the operating hours of the nearest Home Affairs office. At the beginning, with my small team, a, small, a very small team of uh, three, three people we are working together, uh, we were working with putting our own uh, money to print and we were printing very little newspaper, something like 500 to 1,000 copies. Now more than 10,000 copies are printed and distributed every month for free to the Congolese community. And there's major scope for growth. Finding good content is critical to the success of the newspaper. But that's not a problem for some of the journalists who work their beat. When I go to look for the stories, and then we're always funding, uh, asking for the, the, the Congolese community so they can give us some stories so we can be able to tap it and then to, to put others on new, newspaper something. Cape Town's Congolese community is pretty well integrated and thanks to monthlies like the Congo Square News, they can stay on top of important developments both here and back home. Representative Andrew, CGTN Cape Town.